the Love of Swimming is a podcast that celebrates the wonderfully diverse community of swimmers and fantastic swimming opportunities that exist on the Isle of Wight off the south coast of England. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Sandy Chikunyani. In 2019, I started the group Outdoor Swimming Isle of Wight as I wanted to find people to swim with in the sea. Since then, I've been on an amazing swimming journey, meeting some wonderful people who share my passion for swimming. I founded a social enterprise to support and encourage people to swim in the sea, trained to be an open water coach, developed the concept of a sea cafe and have brought the sport of Longecot, renamed sea hiking, to the place where I live. I'm part of the outside research study team based at Sussex University, looking at outdoor swimming as a nature-based social prescribing intervention for depression and I work in the voluntary sector on the Isle of Wight. For the Love of Swimming is also the name of a series of community events that aim to share information and inspiration and to connect people through swimming. So if you're lucky enough to live on or visit the island, look out for these events coming soon. Follow us on all the usual social media channels and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast for more personal swimming stories. Today I'm with Charlotte James at the West White Sports and Community Centre. Welcome, Lottie, to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for giving me your time. So let's start with some really quick, easy questions, if we can. What, what, what sort of swimmer are you? So I'm an ex-competitive swimmer, um, and that was pool swimming. Um, I've also done a little bit of open water, um, done a little bit of master swimming as well, um, Started swimming when I was four and started competing when I was nine, mm-hmm. and I'm now 23, so mm-hmm. I've been doing it for quite a long time now, but s- still love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> and what's your favorite stroke? Oh, that is really tricky. So I love all the strokes, and I actually used to do quite a lot of um, IM events, mm-hmm. uh, individual medley. Um, I think. My best strokes are probably, in terms of sprint, I would say backstroke and breaststroke, but I do love my distance swimming as well, so then it would be front crawl. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, have you got a favourite distance? <laughs> oh, don't know, because, again, it's so tricky. I mean, I started off with, like, sprint swimming and the shorter sort of distances, and then I found... I love uh, distance swimming, so pretty much anywhere up to 1.5k. And then there was a period of time where I was quite poorly, so I had to stop distance swimming and I went back to sprint training. And then it was only a couple of years ago when I wanted to try and do the sail and swim that I really got back into the distance training again. So it's sort of been very back and forth. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I love I love both of them. Yeah. 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 Oh, what, what about what about kit have you got a favorite bit of kit that you always have with you or that you you love to <laughs> oh my gosh again there's so many bits of kit that you can use and how um, much of your house is it how much of your place oh is filled with swimming kit <laughs> um literally in boxes really? in the house mm-hmm. in the loft yeah everywhere i think my favorite kit would probably be just because you feel so much faster, yeah. so much more power in the water. Um, but then uh, other things like parachutes as well. So you would use that for like a little bit of drag and resistance. <laughs> Those are quite fun to use as well. Um, but yeah, lots of different lots of different bits of equipment. Anything you've got your eye on that you're <laughs> saving up for? Ooh. Again, it's probably fins. There's some really fancy ones out there with some really cool patterns. So yeah. Probably just some more fins. Yeah. Not that I need any more, but you know they look pretty. <laughs> Excellent. And what about what have you got? A sort of a, a training routine of your own at the moment. Oh, What's your sort of? Mm, I I wouldn't say there's like a set routine in terms of swimming because obviously uh, where I'm a swim teacher, I spend a lot of my time in the water with the children. Mm-hmm. So after that, I'm so, I sort of don't really want to spend any more time in the water, but. I think now that I'm not competing as much, I've sort of gone over to doing quite a lot in the gym and doing quite a lot of running. Mm-hmm. And then I normally do about two to three K 
of swimming in the week. So not not a lot, but just a little bit to sort sort of stay. Yeah. Yeah. So not as much as I used to. I think when I was in my sort of distance phase, I was doing like five to six K sessions. Wow. And then that would be about four or five times a week. Gosh. So obviously I've <laughs> dropped down yeah. quite a lot. But then I wouldn't I wouldn't say my love for swimming is changed in any way it's just that my attention is obviously elsewhere and I'm wanting to help other people with yeah. their swimming mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> okay and what else was I going to ask you yeah what about nutrition that is have you got any sort of particular things that you eat or don't eat before you're or what, what when you're swimming I think when I was competing I used to survive off of pasta and rice and things like mm -hmm. that and then if I was doing sprint events I would always make sure I had a little stash of jelly babies or something before I got going but I've never put too much attention or too much focus on sort of the eating side of things because I think you can sort of get into unhealthy and toxic sort of habits and mm -hmm. thinking I think as long as you're not going too crazy with the sugar and you're fueling your body in the right way for your longer swims with like carbs and stuff like that, then just stick to that. Yeah. Don't, don't put any pressure or anything on yourself. Yeah. yeah. And what about, is there, is there a set amount of time that you have to s stop eating before you swim? Or are you, um, are you lucky? Can you just eat whenever? I try and eat sort of like an hour before swimming i think if i eat too close to my swim it does make me feel a bit sicky so yeah i think i think you're best to sort of eat a small amount before your swim and then just make sure that you're staying hydrated throughout your swim and maybe take along a little snack if you are doing those longer distances yeah yeah mm. I was going to say the drinking water by the pool. I mean, I do that all the time. But when I was young, nobody did it. It wasn't a thing. But it's, yeah, it's really nice that to see everyone's kind of staying hydrated in the pool. Yeah, well. definitely. I think as well, I see quite a lot of people in public swim or those that have started doing fitness sessions with me. They don't bring along any water mm -hmm. or anything to drink. And then they say to me, oh, like, why, why am I getting cramped? Why am I hurting? And I'm like, well, you're still sweating. Even though you're in the water, you're still wetting, sweating. Yeah. So you need to you need to stay hydrated. Yeah. You need to take along your water to your sessions. Yeah, a lot of people don't realise that. Do no, they? <laughs> no. They used to it in an aerobics class, but not in the pool. No, yeah. <laughs> Good right. If we, if we can just sort of go back a little bit. So you said you you learned to swim when you were four. Do you remember where it was you learned to swim and what uh, was that yeah. like? So I learned to swim here mm -hmm. at West White. It was at the very beginning, it was just with my mum and my dad. And the only reason I started swimming is because I was very poorly with pneumonia oh. and I was hospitalised. Right. I spent quite a while in the in the hospital. I couldn't walk for quite a while as well. <laughs> so I actually started swimming as sort of like a form of therapy. And then it just sort of went from there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. And and what what when did you kind of get into the competitive swimming? Did you? So were you just naturally good at it from the beginning, do you think? Or so my first stroke that I learned to swim was actually breaststroke. Mm. Uh for most people it's front crawl. So that was quite strange in itself. But I've I've always been like a natural breaststroker and I think the teachers picked up on that. And then obviously they developed the rest of my strokes and I think I've always just had that little bit of a competitive side when it comes to any sport so I think it just went from there really mm -hmm. yeah excellent what made you get into teaching I think once I'd left school I, I wasn't really one of those people that was completely set on going to university I sort of just wanted to get going with work straight away and I'm very local to the sports centre so I thought why don't I just see if I can get a job working here um, and being a swimmer myself I just thought it would make sense to you know help other people to learn to swim 
so yeah that's great and did you look did you sort of do your teacher training here at the sports center um so i did most of my teacher training over in bournemouth because <laughs> that's where i used to swim i had a scholarship over at bournemouth collegiate so they were quite happy to put me through the teacher training yeah oh, well wow. tell me more about the scholarship <laughs> um so this was oh, i'm trying to think how many years now i went over to visit the school in 2013 I did like a little swimming trial session and they looked at my times from like previous races and competitions and they decided that I was good enough for the beginner squad. So yeah, I I started going over to Bournemouth in 2013 and I was a weekly boarder at the school. So I would just go home at weekends if I wasn't competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> was that a good time it sounds quite tough but did you enjoy it was um that- I think it there was a lot of good and there was a lot of bad as well I mean I I loved being at the school and I loved having the experiences of training with like all these amazing people mm. um I used to train with a uh, Paralympic swimmer Alice Ty um and so many other amazing swimmers um so that that in in itself was an incredible experience Mm -hmm. met lots of amazing people got to visit lots of amazing places but also I think being quite young and being away from home it was quite tough at times um and the training was very intense I mean obviously when you're when you're training with a Paralympian and sort of national and international swimmers it's going to be pretty crazy but then I I wouldn't change anything because it's it's made me who I am Mm. today so yeah yeah. (laughs) excellent I was gonna say is there anyone in particular that you've met or that you've that you've just seen and observed what they do is anyone particular who inspires you in the swimming world I think everyone would say Michael Phelps but then I think just in general I I'm inspired by so many different swimmers and why they started swimming why why they love swimming why they choose to keep swimming there's so many interesting stories and interesting people that it's it's sort of hard to pinpoint one particular person and then I've obviously had quite a few coaches as well who've inspired me so I, I don't really have one in no. particular <laughs> yeah no that's great I mean that's why I started these podcasts really because again I've met so many amazing people with with really interesting stories so yeah it's good to hear think the same what would you say is and again another difficult question because I know you've done so much but what would you say is your biggest sort of achievement in swimming or what or list a few of them uh, I think when so when I was 11 I competed in my first 1500 meters here at West White mm. Sports Center and my time put me second in the country wow. so that was quite a yeah. big achievement mm. I think I've actually got the rankings in a in a frame at home somewhere <laughs> So, yeah, that was a very big achievement. Mm. And then I would say competing on the Island Games team because we've done, we've done quite a lot of training with lots of different people. We've got to see so many amazing places and just experience lots of different things. So that's, that's quite a big achievement as well. And then I would say doing the Solent Swim, that's quite a big achievement because... From a very young age, I've always stuck to the pool mm-hmm. and pool swimming. And I was one of those people that was a bit scared mm. of swimming in open water. So I never really expected to do such a big swim yeah. in the sea. So I think that's quite a big achievement as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, tell, tell me more about that sort of transition into the sea and uh, some of the things that kind of maybe frightened you at first. Um, I think... I was frightened of not seeing what was underneath yeah. me and sort of not knowing what's there because obviously it's not always lovely and clear. You can't always see no. what's going <laughs> on. Um, and I think just sort of those um, sort of like 
fears as well like those natural instincts of like oh like the weather or the waves just being a bit scared of like all the dangers mm. and everything um and i think uh one of the reasons i got into the solent swim is because one of my good friends lucy was doing it um and she, she'd actually done it the year before she said oh it's amazing you need to do it you 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 do so well because you're a distance mm. swimmer she's like this is for you give it a go and i said to lucy i was like oh i don't really know how to start though i'm so scared of you know swimming in the sea and she said oh just come along with me a few times and just get in get in up to your knees get in up to your mm. belly and just go from yeah. there and it worked i think it's just sort of that those gradual steps those baby steps of just going in for a couple of minutes yeah. at a time exactly and always um, going with somebody else yeah just definitely for that got to go with someone yeah. else um I think yeah just taking it slow I think with sort of any swimming goals or, or, or any goals in general don't put pressure on yourself or you or or set unrealistic goals you have to take it step by step um so yeah I think that's one of the the biggest achievements yeah, <laughs> yeah doing the same thing swim yeah <laughs> <laughs> and talking of goals have you got any sort of long-term goals with your swimming or just I, I would quite like to do the solo swim again it would be it would be nice to see how many times I can do it but unfortunately I can't do it this year but yeah I would love to do that again I think also maybe doing a bit more uh master's competitions as well um and I think I'd like to do quite a lot more coaching mm -hmm. with people at the moment most of my work is teaching with children but I would I would like to do a lot more coaching so. yeah and you're offering that here here at the sports center yeah so I can do one-to-one -one coaching sessions one-to-two coaching sessions uh also um started to write out swim programs as well which can be personalized to you mm -hmm. so those programs are four weeks long or six weeks long and you just need to be able to swim a minimum of 100 meters um but yeah i love writing sessions so i'm more than happy <laughs> i'm more than happy to help help hey. anyone with their swimming goals yeah and you like a challenge as well don't i love you? challenge yeah i think that's that is swimming yeah swimming is there's always a challenge within something you can't get bored there's always something you can do yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant uh, what else was i going to ask you i've got a whole list here actually you were saying that it's you were talking about being on the beach in the summer obviously we're an island surrounded by lovely beaches but what is it like being sort of working in in the swimming industry as it were how easy do you find it to kind of switch off from that um i think when i head to beach in the summer i i don't necessarily come out of work mode because i naturally want to look after and protect people mm. so when i head down to the beach and i see my own swimmers or other teachers swimmers i sort of keep an eye on them because we don't we don't have lifeguards um everyone sort of thinks oh it's nice and flat it's nice and calm nothing can go wrong mm -hmm. um but actually with that sort of attitude and sort of you know taking your eyes away that's when things do happen mm -hmm. so I think I don't I don't find it easy to sort of switch off I'm still sort of looking out for people and just checking that they're okay yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, you, but do you still enjoy swimming even though it's a kind of a work thing now do you do you enjoy it um I think I enjoy open water more now because I I feel like it's more separate obviously if I'm working and swimming in the same place it can feel a bit stressful yeah. I don't really feel like I've removed myself from work yeah. if that makes sense so I think I I enjoy open water a bit more now um, which I'm surprised to say, quite honestly, because obviously I, so I haven't been doing pool swimming for such a long time. Um, but yeah, I, there's something, there's something about swimming in the sea that's so 
therapeutic and it's such like a thrill as well mm. that feeling when you when you get out is just amazing yeah and do you tend to wear a wetsuit or swimsuit yeah normally normally wear a wetsuit when I go in and sometimes I da- double cap as well um but yeah yeah and I was going to say, how are you with the cold? I mean, do you, do you enjoy the, the sort of the cold or do you wait until a certain time of year to go out? Um, I, I, I'm i okay with it because we've with the training that I've done over the years, we used to train in outdoor pools as well and lidos and things. So I'm not really bad with the temperature as such. But obviously you've got you've got to be careful. Like, you know, look at the temperature, look at the tides, like don't just go in and be silly and stay in for hours on end (laughs) can we just go back to last year's Solent swim because I was standing on on the shore (laughs) watching people come in and there you were (laughs) how did that feel you you sort of you did come in first didn't you yeah I think it was in just under half an hour which is what I, I know it's not a race but that's that's what I was aiming for so I was I was very pleased with that yeah and as much as I, in my head I was like, oh, I want to get this time or I need to get across, it's it's really lovely to see so many people come together all at different sort of stages in their in their swimming journey. And I think what I loved about coming out first is that I then got to watch everyone else doing their swim and then come out at the end and the smiles on their faces. It was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. it's such a lovely event. Isn't yeah, it? really good. Yeah. And I think the sun was out, wasn't it? I seem to remember. It was in my head, it was sunny, but <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, that was, I think perhaps that was just the smiles. <laughs> much don't want to keep you too long but what I want this this podcast is called for the love of swimming well what would you say is the thing that makes you love swimming oh my god so many things I think it's you you enter your own world once your head is in the water like and you can't hear anything else and you're sort of with your own thoughts and you can switch off if you really want to I think that's just the best the best feeling no one else can sort of interfere with that that world of yours it's so like calm and therapeutic and yeah I think that's it being able to escape from everything else and sort of just plod up and down for as long as you like yeah I think that's probably the best the best feeling yeah (laughs) what's the swimming community like in your experience I think it's really interesting because even though we're on an island and we're surrounded by water, I I don't feel like the swimming community is as big or necessarily as strong as it is when I've been over on the mainland with obviously different clubs and different people. I don't know if that's to do with just funds or... People just don't have the access to certain things. I'm not sure, but I I do feel like the community on the mainland is a lot stronger. But then I also think that things are changing over here. Yeah, I mean, there's Um, certainly more sea swimmers now than there were five years ago, for example. Yeah, so things are changing, which is amazing. And hopefully it keeps going in that direction. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I know what I haven't asked you. Have you got a favourite spot for swimming on the island? Favourite spot? Mm. I love swimming at Topland Bay. I love swimming at Colwell Bay and Freshwater Bay as well. Those, those Your home, home turf. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah, those are my favourites, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure and you're a real inspiration. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Good luck with everything with the coaching. And-